Well, there are many things, but I think the most important one is the fact that when you're abroad, in principle at least, you have an enormous amount of practice. In the classroom, no matter how the teaching is conducted, it's impossible to have enough practice. In order to learn a language, you need practice, practice, practice. When you go abroad, in principle, you have 24 hours a day of practice. Of course, that is the principle, because some students, when they go abroad, they stay with, with friends and uh, they speak their native language all the time, and that, of course, is not what we want. If you don't practice, you're not going to learn. It's not like anything magical happens when you go abroad. It's just the quantity and, of course, also the quality of the practice that counts. Because if you have the same stereotypical interactions day after day, and how was your day, or, or can I please have this, here you go, thank you, blah, 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 you're not going to learn as much either. So you really need to be able to talk with a variety of people about a variety of topics and do a lot of that. And that's basically what I think study abroad is for. And that assumes, of course, that you have a basis for practice, that you have learned enough at home to be able to practice it when you go abroad. Because I think going abroad with no previous study or very little is a waste of time. You can learn your grammar at home probably more efficiently than you can do it when you Well, first of all, one fairly obvious thing is that people typically, when they go abroad, practice speaking and listening much more than at home, and that's where they improve, improve more than in, say, uh, reading and writing, which they often don't do very much. Okay? But I think your question probably is more specific about what aspects of, of speaking improve most, and there what the literature shows is that accuracy often doesn't improve all that much. What improves the most is fluency. Because as you practice the things you know, you become more and more fluent at using them. But if there's something you don't know yet, it's not by using what you don't know that it's going to improve. Plus, you also have to take into account that if fluency improves a lot and accuracy stays the same, that is a big gain. Being able to be equally accurate, even though you're more fluent, that in a way means indirectly you've gained in accuracy too. It's just that depending on how you look at it, how you calculate it, typically accuracy doesn't improve all that much. Studies are a little bit inconsistent on, on this point, but overall I would say accuracy does not improve very much, but fluency improves the most. Yes, that's an interesting question, because what I've noticed is that often when students go abroad, they don't quite realize the difference between a native speaker that they encounter and their teachers back home, because both have advantages and disadvantages. The native speaker, of course, has the advantage of being the perfect model for the language, being a native speaker, but they have disadvantages. First of all, they may not know your native language. Secondly, they are not trained as teachers, they are not linguists. So very often, like when you make a mistake or when you show you're struggling to say something, well, they see you're having a problem, but they have no idea that you're hesitating about using the subjunctive or that there is this particular word that you're confusing with this other word. They don't know why you're hesitating when you make a mistake. They don't know where the mistake is coming from. They notice something is weird in the sentence, whereas your teacher understands that. So the teacher is typically much better at giving feedback. The average native speaker is not, in part because of the reasons I just explained. They don't quite understand what your problem is. Plus, they may not be eager to give feedback even when they know that there is a mistake and what the nature is because they may think it's impolite for adults to correct each other. Okay? So you typically don't get as much feedback from the native speaker than you would think. But of course, you get a lot of good input and a lot of opportunities for, for practice. So, I think people should be made aware of that, uh, and the teachers, that's their role, to make students aware of that, that they shouldn't treat native speakers as teachers and ask them questions about the language or constantly trying to elicit feedback by, by uh, signaling that they are uncertain about something, because native speakers won't know whether they are uncertain about the content of what they are saying or about the lexical content or, or about the vocabulary, they may not realize that. So that doesn't work very well and actually gets on native speakers' nerves if they do that too often, that's one thing I noticed in my study in, in Spain years ago.